in this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question, longest common prefix. So I'm assuming many of you already know what a prefix is, but if you don't, let me briefly explain. A prefix in the context of strings, remember, we're not working with numbers here. In the context of strings, a prefix is the beginning part of the word, the beginning letters, if you will. And what beginning letters do all three of these words share? If you guessed FLO, you would be correct. Florida man has FLO, Flo has FLO, flower has FLO. That is the longest common prefix. How exactly are we going to build an algorithm around this though? Well, it's leak code, so there's many ways to do this, but I'm going to show you the best ways, the ways that are going to net you the best time complexity, as well as be relatively easy to understand. And with that in mind, the two best ways are going to be horizontal scanning and vertical scanning. You can solve this with a treat. There is a way to do it, but it's not going to really incre increase the time complexity that much. And it's also going to be incredibly complex to do. So let's talk about horizontal scanning first. Horizontal scanning is kind of the way that it sounds. We're going to take our first word. We always take the very first word out. We're going to take the first word out and we're going to incrementally chop letters off of the end. So we're going to chop off the S. And each time that we chop off a letter, what we're going to do is we're going to compare it to the other words that we're trying to find the longest common prefix against. And we're doing this because we're horizontal scanning. We're moving through this word horizontally, incrementally chopping off letters and checking to see if they exist within the other words in the array. And we're going to do this until we get down to FL. And once we get down to FL, we're going to find that these two combinations of letters are found in every single word in our array. And that is our longest common prefix. Don't get me wrong. Horizontal scanning, great algorithm that will net you a pass in an interview situation. But the bad thing is, is that horizontal scanning is not very intuitive. Nobody's going to think off the top of their head, hey, grab the first word and take that word and start chopping letters off of the end and compare them to the other words in the array. Just not going to happen. But vertical scanning, on the other hand, is very intuitive because it's exactly how you would find the longest common prefix if you were just to do so visually. If you were to do so visually, you would just check the very first letter and the very first word against the very first letter of the other words and just incrementally do the same thing. So we would check F, then we would check if the L's exist in the other word. Then finally, you guessed it, we would check the O. The O doesn't exist within the other words in the array, therefore FL is our longest common prefix. And that's why we call it vertical scanning because we're basically going through each letter vertically checking for matches. And this can easily be implemented with a double for loop. We'll take the first for loop, and this first for loop is going to iterate over every single individual character in the first word. Key point, that first for loop is going to just be iterating over the letters in the first word. As we iterate through every single character, what we're going to do is we're going to use a second for loop that's going to do the comparison of each letter one by one. So first things first, we'll check the F. F exists within every single word. Then we'll check the L. Then L exists within every single word. Finally, we get to the O. O does not exist. We found our longest common prefix. Let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's implement vertical scanning algorithm. So we are inside of IntelliJ and of course, first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class. I'm gonna call this solution. Within the solution, we're going to house our method and this method of course is going to be public. We're going to return just a plain old string and also we're going to name this longest common prefix and we're going to take in an array of strings. 
So IntelliJ is going to go ahead and do our edge cases for us. Let's go ahead and check if the string is equal to null or if it's equal to zero, which is an empty string. And if it's an empty string, we're going to return an empty string because we want, we want the algorithm to stop. Next thing is that we want to create a for loop that's going to iterate over only the characters of the first word. We don't want to iterate over every, we don't want to do this. We don't want to iterate over the actual, just a whole entire array. We want to iterate over just the first word. And that's what this is doing right here. Very key point, don't forget that. Next thing is that this is not um, required, but we're just gonna go ahead and abstract out the current character so we don't have to keep typing this out over and over again. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the second for loop. And this second for loop is going to check if the corresponding letters that we are trying to match within the first word our actual matches. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, we've created our very first for loop and this for loop is going to iterate over the individual characters. But now we need to check the corresponding letter of the words down the line. And that's where the second for loop is going to come in. And it's going to check these words simultaneously as we iterate through the first word checking for the common prefixes. So for an L, it's going to check the Ls. How exactly is that going to work? Well, notice something important. We're starting at the second word. What we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement. And this if statement is going to house two incredibly important pieces of logic. What does this piece of logic do? Well, let me explain. We're making sure that the index is greater than or equal to the length of the string. Why would we even consider doing something like that though? That may not make any sense. Well, leak code is going to give you really crazy test cases that look something like this. You'll have a relatively long word and then you'll have short words right after it. And if you try to access, let's say the second letter, the L in this case, in the second or the third word, what's going to happen is you're going to get a very nasty index out of bounds error because you're trying to access something that's not there. Also, there's no possibility that L could even be a longest common prefix, so there's no point in checking it. The second piece of logic is the matching logic. It may not look that complicated, but this is what's actually doing the matching. And we're comparing the word that we're looking at within our inner for loop to the index that we're currently at within our outer for loop. How does that work? Well, remember, we have our first for loop and it's checking each individual letter. And we need to go through and we need to check the individual letters in the second and the third word. But our inner for loop is just checking the whole entire word itself. So we need to actually reach into that word and pull out the index. We need to make sure that it's not the current char. If it's not the current char, that means that the letter that we found that doesn't match any of the other letters means that we've found our longest common prefix and we can finally return it in the form of a substring. And the substring method will just chop it for us and we're ready to go we can finally return it at the end. And that's what we're gonna do. So, whew, let's go ahead, let's copy all this right here. Let's toss this into leak code. Let's get it out of full screen. Let's toss this into leak code and see what we get. I'm gonna go ahead, bring this over. I'm going to go ahead, toss that within the editor. Let's go ahead, run it. Our test cases are accepted. Let's go ahead, check our time complexity. Time complexity is gonna be and I don't think that's right. I think it's actually NM. So don't think it's actually linear. It's NM that's doing a little bit too much justice. And our space complexity is going to be constant. Congratulations, guys. We passed the interview. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.